This newest little tyke from Harley is the Street Rod 750, which is a sportier derivative of the Street 750. Now, while Harley does have a sporting history, those days are long gone. So it's honestly a refreshing move from the bike maker to revisit its sporting heritage. We've got the Street Rod here in to test in our Indian conditions and see if this is indeed the Harley that is versatile enough to be an everyday bike. This new street rod takes inspiration from the company's drag-styled bikes such as the V-Rod and the Night Rod and packs in aggressive styling. Apart from a healthy dose of matte black paint for the engine and exhaust, the rear fender too has been shortened to give it a sportier makeover and the drag bike motif continues to the front with a tall cowl around the round headlight along with flat drag style handlebars and bar and mirrors. The new street rod derives its motor from the same 749cc 8-valve liquid-cooled V-twin Revolution X engine that powers the Street 750 with identical bore and stroke figures but with a new fueling system. In this high power guys, it features twin port injection and it gets a larger throttle body as well. This motor makes 62 newton meters of torque, which is an increase of 3 newton meters, coming in at 4000 rpm. While Harley Davidson doesn't specify the exact power figures for either the Street 750 or the Street Rod, they do mention that the latter has a peak horsepower increase of 11%, coming in at 8250 rpm. The rev limiter now kicks in at 9000 rpm instead of the Street 750's 8000 rpm. With an increase of only 5 kg in terms of curb weight, this increased power and torque figures translates to sharper acceleration on the street rod as compared to its cruiser sibling. The bike also gets a shorter and wider exhaust that adds a slightly more aggressive soundtrack to the motor. On the other hand, the 6-speed gearbox is carried over exactly as is from the Street 750. While the main frame of the bike has been maintained, it gets a shorter subframe it now gets beefy 43mm inverted forks at the front, while the twin rear shocks now get piggyback reservoirs for improved damping. With the new forks, the front geometry of the bike has also been altered and now features a tighter 27 degree rake angle, which also results in a reduced trail of 99mm. This has led to a drop of 10mm from the overall wheelbase. And in order to maximize cornering performance, Harley Davidson has also upgraded the tires to radials. The improved rubber from MRF really ensures that this street rod is not just about straight roads. Even the brakes have seen an immense improvement, thanks to dual 300mm rotors up front, as opposed to the single disc on the Street 750. However, the rear brake stays the same, although Harley is now offering ABS as standard on the street rod, which should really help increase safety to match the boost in performance. So the street rod's got a nice bucket-shaped seat that adds to the overall sporty look of the bike. And once you get aboard, because of the flat handlebars, there's a slight forward lean, which gives you a slightly aggressive seating posture. We certainly were mighty impressed with the way the street rod handles. The aggressive seating position means you're already sitting quite leaned into the handlebars. So dipping deep into corners feels quite natural. The higher cornering clearance makes for much sharper handling, especially when you factor in the increased seat height of 765mm that makes for a higher centre of gravity. Once you're into the corner, the street rod has a rather composed feel that really encourages you to push it harder. And the engine definitely feels more punchy than the Street 750. Once you ring that throttle, the bike surges forward with a sense of purpose. The street rod comes together just brilliantly and really is a hoot to ride. Although it would definitely be more than happy to obliterate a set of twisty mountain roads, the seating position may make things a little bit uncomfortable on longer hauls. Now on the street rod, the foot pegs are positioned a little closer to the rider instead of the more forward set ones on the Street 750. The only issue with these foot pegs is if you're in slow moving crawling traffic and you have to put your feet down, they do tend to get in the way. And another issue is if you put your left foot on the ground, your thigh tends to touch the rear cylinder head, which does tend to get quite hot. Another area we were really impressed with is the ride quality. The street rod manages to handle bad roads decently well, but at the same time, 
the suspension isn't soft enough that it gets wallowy in the turns and hampers precision. We can safely say that this is one of the best Harleys we've ridden. And despite Harley's previous efforts in this space, the Street Rod is a value-heavy proposition. The Street Rod does command a slight premium over the Street 750. But that premium is quite justified, considering the amount of parts and upgrades that the Street Rod 750 gets. And although some may find it heavy or uncomfortable, the Street Rod will appeal to riders who may not have considered a Harley as their next motorcycle. कभी न रुकने वाले जुनून को रफ्तार देता है सर्व वर्ल्ड क्लास लुब्रिकेंट्स